Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our complimentary showcase of Mastering the Charts, formerly Training the Eyes. So good to have you all here. How are you guys doing this morning? Good to see everyone in here. I'm just going to get my chat set up. Good to see you guys. So welcome to everyone who's new that couldn't attend our first one. And if you did attend the first one, welcome back. We have a lot to share with you guys today. As far as mastering the charts, it's going to be a whole new way of visualizing the price patterns in the markets and to build your confidence of how you read the price charts. So we've got a lot in store for you guys today. Hopefully you guys are ready. It's going to be very interactive and engaging. So stay tuned. A uh, couple quizzes, I believe, so make sure that you're ready to answer um, and just following along with us. So a couple disclosures before we get into it. The information contained within should not be construed as a recommendation or an offer to buy or sell any security or financial instrument solely for educational and informational purposes only. You know, this course is amazing in the fact that we're going to be teaching you key ways to find where there's imbalances of orders looking for buy opportunities and sell opportunities. Once you train your eyes of how to see those price patterns, then that's going to give you a key advantage of looking for where to make your trading opportunities. So welcome, thank you for joining us. As I mentioned, the purpose of this showcase is to enlighten you to a new way of trading and looking at the price charts. So like never done before, we're showing you very specific price patterns and how to visualize them to stack the odds in your favor. What are we gonna be looking at? We're gonna be looking at structures. A lot of you guys see them as these W and M patterns in the markets. That's gonna be part one. Then we're gonna be doing a deeper dive into areas. So we start off with structures and then we're zooming into specific areas within those structures to find our high probability trade setups. Then we're zooming in a little bit more to isolate a very specific group of candles. That's gonna be the leg base, leg base group of candles. So it's all part of this refining process and looking at these different pictures on the price charts to stack the odds in our favor. So again, course outline, starting off, as I mentioned, with structures, we're looking at these price patterns where we have higher highs, higher lows, lower highs, lower lows. All of these different structures give us an idea of where we should be looking for our areas and like base, like base group of candles. So key differences between each one and where we should look. After structures, again, we're looking for specific areas within those structures to isolate where we may see some more information to lead to a potential trade setup. So areas, we're looking for those wick over wicks and we're looking for consolidation within those wick over wicks. Now it's all about adjusting the time frame to visualize these pictures. So, you know, for those of you who are more swing traders, like longer term trading, or even if you look at the smaller time frames, this is going to apply to everyone. Then after areas, again, we're, we're honing in on those specific areas even more, looking at the smaller time frames to isolate this group of candles. So what's new with Mastering the Charts? So much, we've completely redone it and added a ton new content based off of your suggestions and feedback of things that you want to see. So we're really excited to go over those with you. We're gonna be training your eyes to visualize the three touches of support and resistance. This is gonna be key because a lot of traders know what the three touches is and know what support and resistance is, but we're gonna be showing you why that's important and how this can give us a clue of where we should be looking for our trade opportunities. Visualizing the dead space, this one is also going to be key. A lot of traders, I think, think of the dead space as areas where they shouldn't be trading, it's elevated risk. But once we know how to define it, this can often lead to longer term trade setups. So we'll take a look at that later. Then understanding the difference between what's a pivot point and what's a buy in a sell territory. Pivot points are not areas where we're looking to take a trade setup, a little bit more elevated risk versus a buy or sell territory, looking at the leg base, leg base. There's key differences between the two where we'll want to take a trade setup more with the leg base, leg base versus a pivot point. And then visualizing successful versus unsuccessful trades. You know, it's very important to know the difference. I know all traders like to focus on the successful ones, obviously, because we want to make successful trades. We also want to evaluate and 
assess the unsuccessful ones so that we don't keep making unsuccessful trades time and time again. Plus more step-by-step -step walkthroughs that put the pieces together. Morning, Andrew, good to see you. Happy St. Patty's Day, everyone. So yeah, big thing here, putting the pieces together, you know, for me and what I've found is that a lot of trading education companies that, you know, especially for me when I was learning, I, you know, I took a futures course, I took an options course, and I took a basic charting analysis course. But there was never that course that really put the pieces together for me so that I could understand how to read the price charts. You know, I knew a lot of information, but nothing was ever cohesive. So I think this course is honestly going to be that course that puts the pieces together for you guys, fills in those gaps where you may be missing some information. We're gonna be tying everything together for you guys. So again, what's new? Looking for the three touches of support and resistance. We can see here, we've got a, a key resistance level, one, two, three touches. So the reason why price change direction here going to be key in looking to the left-hand side of the chart. We can see the three touches is present. That's going to give us a key advantage of where we should be looking. On the short side as well, we can see we've got three touches on the bottom and price came back up. So when we're looking to take these short and long trade opportunities, all about looking to the left-hand side of the chart and looking at what information is present that we can take these trade opportunities and get some nice long runs out of them. So this one, the dead space, again, we're not looking for trade opportunities within the dead space. What's going to be a key advantage is that once we can identify it and define it, we can actually stay in trades a little bit longer and have these big moves to the downside or to the upside. So it's all about defining that, understanding what it is, and then we can actually stay in trades a little bit longer versus trying to pick the bottoms when price is honestly just having a big move to the downside. Russell, yeah, I'm gonna go over that. Awesome job. Yeah, Russell says, great call on the NASDAQ long yesterday, worked perfectly for me after the FOMC, just ticked it. So I did want to show that today, but you know, you guys can do this too, as far as finding these high probability entry points. Um, once we know what to look for, that's what leads to our quality entry points, know where to get in and where to get out. A great job. I'm glad you got, uh, you took advantage of that, Russell. So also visualizing pivot points versus buy and sell territory. So again, pivot point, not a place we want to take a trade. However, buy territories and sell territories that's where we start to visualize the information to the left-hand side and see that this would be a higher probability trade setup. And then visualizing successful versus unsuccessful. Again, we obviously want to look at the characteristics here that leads to a successful trade. However, if we're taking unsuccessful trades, the key thing is not making them time and time again. We wanna learn what criteria may or may not be in this setup that is present in the successful ones. All about stacking the odds in our favor, knowing what to look for and looking to the left-hand side of the chart. All right, so getting to know you guys, so especially if you're new here, or even if you were in the first one, we still want to hear your input, but just getting a feel of you guys, what you trade, what you look at. So starting off question one, what asset classes do you guys trade? You looking at futures, you looking at stocks, certain products. I know a lot of our students like to look, you know, primarily at gold or just at oil. So let's see, a lot of futures. Hey, Bonnie. FX, so futures, FX, a lot of futures, love that. Big on futures, ETFs, commodities, stocks, good mix here. See a lot of futures. So yeah, do like that. Features and options, stocks, options, sometimes features. Very nice. Features and stocks. And this is any time frame. Options, features, stocks. Okay, great mix, everyone. So, you know, good to get a feel of the room. Keep in mind that mastering the charts it can apply to any asset class. So no matter what you trade, this is going to be a great course for you because it trains your eyes to see where there are those imbalances and where we can visualize those price patterns on any asset class. All right, so question two, what time frames do you guys trade? I think Anna already said she trades uh, any time frame, which is great. 
you guys look at specific time frames? Are you more swing trading? Are you uh, shorter term traders? What's the general time frames you guys look at? A look at that. Big difference from the first group. The first showcase we did, I think people stuck to more specific time frames. Seeing a lot of people here that are looking at all time frames, which is great. All okay, day short, day trading, 15 to 60 for entry. Very nice. Again, it says longer term, swing and long. So great. Yeah. So again, so this course, because it's all about the picture on the price chart, no matter what time frames you trade, the smaller time frames or even you know the longer or swing trading, it's all about visualizing the price charts to see where there's an imbalance of orders. That's where we want to take our trade opportunities. Jennifer says all over. There we go. Yeah, all different time frames can work as long as we know how to turn the time frame up, turn the time frame down to refine those pictures on the price charts. And then lastly, let's see, on a scale of one to 10, how confident are you with your chart reading? How are you guys? Are you guys at a 10? Are you guys at a, a one? What's your, your over, and be honest. So it's a good place to just, you know, you know, whatever it is, it's totally okay. So seeming like we're in the same ballpark, see a lot of fives and sixes. Michael, is that a negative five? Five, six, four to five. Okay, so we're in that range. Yeah, James, I feel you on that one. 10 after a good trade, one after a bad one. It can, you know, be like that. Seven, five. Okay, like the honesty. You're right. Can we learn how to chart my emotions? Hey, we're going to work on that. I mean, part of mastering the charts is all about objectivity, having specific rules. So if we can just leave it to being very rule specific and very objective, got to take the emotions out of it. Yeah, psychology absolutely is so important. So whatever your number was after mastering the charts, it's going to be higher. We're going to show you, you know, just understanding how to read the price charts, building your confidence so you know where to get in, where to get out, and understand where there's those imbalance of orders. I'm putting in my 10,000 hours. There we go. The next, mastering the charts, as I mentioned, applies to any asset class, stocks, futures, forex, whatever you look at, even specific products, going to apply to pretty much everything, as well as any time frame. So for those of you who are doing more of the swing trading, longer term, daily, weekly, monthly, it's applying to that as well, or even the smaller time frames, you know, 47 minute, a three minute, it's going to apply to those as well. All about, again, the picture on the price charts and seeing where we have this information when we find structures, we find areas, we find leg base, leg base, that's going to uh, give us those areas of where we should be honing in on and looking for our trade opportunities. So it's all about the picture on the price charts and training the eyes to see it. So how we're different, we expose key information that we'll have you see in the price charts like never before and really putting the pieces together. So again, if you know, I, a lot of our students or people that come to us are so knowledgeable, one question I wanna ask you guys is how long have you guys been trading for? Have you guys been trading for a few months? Have you guys been trading for years? How about, what's the overall feel for the room? Let's see, five years, three years. Kevin says too many years. I feel you on that. Yeah, so a lot of uh, years, two years, seven. Wow, so yeah, a lot you know, of time that we put into this. And I think the thing is that whether you're a new student to trading or have been trading a long time, once you understand how to read the price charts, you're going to have much more confidence in your trading. And you know, even if you have been doing it a long time and you feel like you're still missing key information, you know, as I mentioned before, you know, for me, I took a futures class and I took an options class, but there was never that class that really put the pieces together and helped me to fill in those gaps. So that's exactly what this course is, is going to, if you feel you still are missing some things or have some concerns or aren't understanding things, we're going to be simplifying it for you and really breaking it down so you can understand how to read the price charts more clearly. Five years, only two and a half with some level of education. So yeah, you can have education and then there's better education. So it's about 
on learning it the right way, the efficient way, and really just simplifying how you guys learn it. We focus on successful and unsuccessful trade setups. Again, we obviously want to see more successful trades, but we do want to learn from the unsuccessful ones and understand what characteristics were in the unsuccessful runs or the ones that were in the successful ones that maybe were missing in some other trade setups. We'll teach you to understand why some trades fail. Again, some trades fail because they're missing that key information that we're going to be teaching you in mastering the, the charts. Once you can stack all these odds in your favor and put the pieces together, then you're gonna have higher probability trade opportunities. And then providing step-by-step -step walkthrough. So, you know, it should be very disciplined, methodical, step-by-step, -step, so you guys can ease it more easily pick it up and understand the process of what we're looking for. That's where we look for, again, structures. Then within structures, we're looking for areas. Within areas, we're looking for the leg base, leg base group of candles. So all about training the eyes to master the price charts. Hey, Danny, good to see you. And then our purpose in mastering the charts, so to explain things in such a way that makes sense to you. This is at the foremost because trading can be complicated anyways and confusing. We don't need to make it more complicated for you guys. We want to simplify it, bring it down. You know, no question is a dumb question. We just want to teach you exactly what you should be seeing and how we can look for those high probability trade setups. So simple, simple, simple. That's going to be the first one. Building confidence in trading. Once you understand how to train your eyes to read the price charts, that's going to overall build your confidence um, and looking for those higher probability trade setups. Then having a clear understanding of how to read the price charts. So we're looking for where there's filled orders, but also where there's unfilled orders. When we know the difference and we can often anticipate where price may change direction or like what we saw in the dead space, price can have these bigger moves. Once we know what to look for, we can better anticipate the trade outcomes. And then understanding how and why price moves so it's not random. You know, we see the institutions pushing price all around. So understanding these price patterns that appear on the price charts is going to be key in understanding how and why price is moving between these different areas. I know mentioned before, so we did take some great trades. So who here is in our live trading room already? So if you were, this was yesterday, uh, we went over, I did this in the pre-market routine before Jeff started, but we start off by going over some of our buy and sell opportunities. And if you took notes on NASDAQ, so this was before the session, we had our one minute sell territory up here, and we had an eight minute buy territory down here. You can see I'm marking them with different timeframes based on the process we go through of looking for the leg base, leg base group of candles. Hey everyone, got a lot of people in here. Good to see you all. So we had our one minute sell territory, eight minute buy territory, really, really cool. Price dropped down, just tap the upper part. Let me zoom in so you guys can see it. Well, price just dipped into it, tap the upper part of that line, and change direction. So if, you know, the key thing with mastering the charts is understanding how we can take advantage of when price change direction and why it did. All about looking to the left-hand side of the chart and seeing what information is there to understand why did price stop going down here and start moving back to the upside. All, it's all gonna be about looking to the left-hand side. I know a lot of traders often get focused on the right-hand side of the chart and what's happening right now, but we need to keep looking left because that's where all the key information is. But drop down into our buy territory and then we can see price stopped here on a dime and moved back to the downside. So again, it's all about looking to the left-hand side because that's where the key information is. And as I mentioned, time doesn't matter. So this was all the way down on a one minute time frame. We found that leg base, leg base group of candles, found it on an eight minute time frame on this one. So when I was asking you about time frames, understanding time doesn't matter. It's all about the pictures on a price chart. That's exactly what we're going to be showing you in mastering the charts. Yeah, right. Russell says so hard to go long when I was screaming down like that. So you have price dropping like this. Sometimes people, you know, get nervous, their emotions come out. 
But when we investigate these areas, we're still anticipating there to be potentially an imbalance of orders from the information that we're looking for on the price charts. Jeff's going to be going into a deeper dive now of exactly what we look for and how training our eyes to look left is going to be key. Jeff, it's all yours. All right. Uh, grab the screen here. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Just got to grab a couple more things out here. Now, Kate, I, I don't know if you saw the uh, Russell's comment in there just before he talked about how how it was hard to go long in that. He said he he did a front run or set the trade up ahead of time, and it dropped right into that zone, and um, then came right back out of it. So he set that up ahead of time, and looked like he. Uh, Got things pretty good. Uh, great job. Now, hey Russell, did you did you pay for the live trading room with that trade? Was that pretty easy to do? <laughs> yeah, it's not hard, is it? <laughs> yeah, we we always want to have products where we, especially in education, that the education pays for itself. So this is why uh, Caitlin and I host the live trading room is to help you all uh, recover the a tuition costs. Okay, and, and one of our philosophies is just let the market pay for what you want, okay? Now, just before I start uh, jumping into this, uh, I do have a couple of uh, levels uh, that we will be looking at. Uh, I made some comments in the Twitter uh, this morning about a one and a half to 2% pullback after the FOMC meeting. So I have that price marked on the chart. Uh, already in the pre-market, prices dropped down to uh, some of these other little areas. So just because the market's opening, I, I wanna give you guys a couple of ideas of what we're doing. I'm waiting for price to come back down to do the corrective move because I'm gonna be presenting to you for just a moment. So uh, this upper little level, little level, okay, in the right location has already been touched and we got a nice little bounce off of it. Uh, I think for the bigger correction will be back down where we have our leg base, leg base, which I'll cover in just a moment. But around 4305, 4287 in that range for the S&P. For the NASDAQ, uh, looking for price to go to the four side of that, 13767, uh, 13699. And we can already see the queues have drip, dropped into that. And we're seeing a little bit of uh, selling pressure on the equities. For the Dow, Looking for that range, we got that one and a half, two percent pullback, and uh, we have the zone in that range, okay, or by territory, 33,632, 33,510. So we got a little bit of waiting to do this morning as price comes back down to these areas. And one last one here on the Russell, 2009 uh, to 2000, as price comes down, it gets into that one and a half, two percent pullback area. Now that one and a half, 2% pullback has been very common to see over the last nine years with the um, run up in front of the FOMC meeting and then the run up or the run back down after, okay? All right, so let's just jump right in. Um, our main purpose here today is to showcase and show you how mastering the charts can help you achieve what you're looking for on the price chart, help you understand it a little bit better. And as we're doing the mastering of the charts, uh, the class that we'll be doing this weekend, okay, uh, for those, uh, Caitlin will go into some details on what you get out of that class towards the end of the session and uh, all the, the benefits of it, start times and so on, okay? Now, there is a process in how we train the eyes to find these areas, okay? and. As I'm going through some of the highlights here, we start off with structures. Now, structures are a fairly easy concept, an easy way to start seeing, and our subconscious picks up on structures very quickly. And just are, they're peaks and valleys, okay? They're pivot points. Now, those pivot points also trigger an emotion to, well, I like it or I don't like it, or I leave this one alone, or let's dig into this, okay? 
So once we have the pivot points, we got to know what we're looking for within those structures and the pivot points there, okay, and where to look inside that. Now, as we start adjusting the time frame up or down, okay, based on the structure, we start looking in certain areas within the structure, okay. And within the certain areas, we find some specific candle patterns, some are like a wick over wick or a consolidation area. Okay, so we can see right here where the wicks kind of overlap the candles. And then we can see the consolidation area where price dropped and then it consolidated and then dropped again or rallied, consolidated and rallied. Okay, so we're looking at specific pictures on the price chart based on the structure and, and the area that we're gonna be looking in. Now within the wick over wick or the consolidation area, we often find as we reduce the time frame, we consistently find a specific group of candles. And this is the elite trades, leg base, leg base group of candles, okay? And in this, it's part of training the eyes to see these specific candle patterns. And the candle patterns really make a significant um, impact as I just showed you a couple of areas that I'm looking for price to change direction, okay? I, that group of candles was highlighted. Now I had to adjust the time frame down or up to get the exact picture, okay? So train the eyes is all about seeing the picture on the price chart. It's not about a trading strategy and it's not about to make you a better trader. It's to help you understand why price moves from one place to another and help you cipher through what is noise and what is an actual trade or high probability trade area. Now, there are some other um, details and what we call odds enhancers around the zone and that we find, okay? So the whole purpose of this is to look left and find these very specific and common price patterns on the chart when we have a high probability where price will change direction. And we start looking at the left-hand side of the chart to study it so that we can train the eyes, to train the brain, to see what's on the left-hand side of the chart to then anticipate where price will change direction. When you know what to look for on the left-hand side of the chart, we can better anticipate, trust, where we're going to see price churn when it's on the right-hand side of the chart. So let's do a couple of exercises in, in visualizing all of this, okay? So first and foremost, when we start looking at a price chart, we have to connect to the price chart and what we desire as an outcome, okay? And this is part of the training process, okay? So as we look at this price chart and we see, would you have liked to buy right here? Now, that is a desired trade. I would love to have gone long and taken that move back to the upside. So if I want to get in a trade at this point, where do I look? Come on, everybody, where do I look? Hi, Summer. Good to have you in here. There you go, Russell. We look left. Thank you, Russell. Okay. All right. So as we start to look left, there are some characteristics of that chart. Okay. We expose the details where that high probability trade was created. Some of the details are finding areas where we have the field sell tickets and price had already moved through that area, okay? Then just below it, we start looking for that leg base, leg base group of candles. Now in, in the Mastering the Charts course, we're gonna walk you step-by-step step through these and there's gonna be a lot of exercises. Now, the class itself is not what makes everything work, it's about you applying and practicing this, okay? And, and many of you have been around uh, some of my teachings in the past. We talk about finding 100 picture-perfect trade setups that have already happened, okay? 
So as we kind of look at this particular picture, there's a lot of details on the left-hand side of the chart that are consistently there when we have a desired outcome of a trade. Now studying picture-perfect trade setups that have already happened is what really enhances you to visualize that right side of the chart. A few more details here in using pivot points or what we refer to as structural pivot points. Now with the structural pivots, you do have to turn the time frame down or up in order to get everything to qualify. So it's all about the picture on the price chart. Now, some of us see the picture very clearly and we don't need all the details, but some of us like myself, I, I gotta understand why it works. I gotta see the picture. I've gotta measure it, okay? I need the mechanics of it. And the mechanics help satisfy if I wanna take risk on that trade or not, okay? And the mechanics are very important as we start a process of training the eyes to master the charts, okay? So as we do look left, we can see that we have some of the pivot points and we can see, I'll just point out a subtle detail, that price made a higher low than the prior low, okay? And then we had this move out of this area. And when it went through this resistance area, it really indicated that there were no more sell tickets and the buy tickets were a large stack of them was left over down below, okay? So let's do some more quizzes. Quizzes are good, they're re learning reinforcement. So why is it important to look left? One, or A, to visualize the structures, shapes and patterns or B, identify an imbalance of orders. C, to identify leg base, leg base, group of candles, or, oh, you guys are already ahead of me, come on. <laughs> yeah, D is the correct answer. See, it's not just one thing that we're looking at, it's a combination of many things as we put these together that uh, help with the visualization process. And they give us a systematic step-by-step -step process which we can itemize as far as a checklist, okay? We can say, did it have this? Did it have this? Did it have this? And the reason that we would be uh, confident in that is we're giving you specific pictures of what you need to look for in order to qualify a buy territory or a sell territory, and then also how to manage that risk. Now, just another comment on that. How to manage that risk also comes along with how do we assess profit margin potential? Now, Caitlin mentioned a couple of uh, a couple of uh, comments about the dead space, and and that dead space is really a, a a place between a resistance and a support area. Now, when price bases below a resistance area, then breaks back into that dead space we often see that there's a large pocket of points right there. Now, pocket of points is one of those terms that we use to uh, understand that we have good profit margin potential. As price breaks into that area, there's really no resistance. And we also realize that the buy territories and sell territories within that uh, dead space do not often work. So breakout trades and momentum trades are more expected in that area. And if you get in early, a good profit margin potential on that. We've had a couple of those happen just this week on the equity indexes. All right, let's look at an example of a successful trade and how to look left. All right, here we have a successful long trade. We have a desired trade. We desire to get into the trade long and take this move to the upside, okay? So as we start to break it down, we look left. As we look left, we start to pick up on some pictures. And these pictures that I'm demonstrating here are very common and it's not out of the, uh, the norm, okay? So here we have our structure, okay? Now the structure is just some pivot points that help us see why we feel good about a trade and why we sometimes just say, no, nah, it's not my trade, okay? See, the subconscious picks up on these price patterns in an instant, just within a few seconds, okay? And we have to understand that with these price patterns, 
they're what creates our desire to get in that trade. So by using structures, we can help ourselves with that psychology. Okay, uh, some of you had some questions on that psychology um, uh, earlier in the session when, when Kay was uh, asking or quizzing you guys earlier, okay? And part of the psych psychology training is understanding how your subconscious thinks and how structures impact that thinking process. So again, made a higher low, another key piece of information when we're looking at structures, okay? And as uh, we start to map off that area, where price change direction, okay? We had that successful trade. All right, so example number two, another successful trade, a desired outcome, okay? Desired short trade, okay? So how do we get into a trade, a successful trade like this, okay? What do we need to do, everybody? Come on, type it in there. There you go. Look left. Keep looking left. Okay. Kind of, kind of hard questions when we got the uh, the answer right on the page. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So as we look left, that information over on the left hand side of the chart is helping us understand, find consistent price details in that patterns and also identify a structure that is being formed for a successful trade. Now these uh, structures can also be trending and they can be reversals. So we have to know the difference between a reversal and a trending. So we know where to look for when we start trading the right side of the chart. Okay. All right, so structures area, leg base, leg base, and, and putting some of these things together. So step number one is kind of identify this structure. In this structure, we can see that we have the higher low. Now, as we identify a structure, the next process we're gonna go into is where to look within that structure. And we kind of look in these areas. Now, in these areas, we're looking for some specific candles. We're looking for either a consolidation area or we're looking for that wick over wick area. Now, just a, a little helpful hint. In many cases, when we have a higher low, the areas that we're focusing on are going to be closer to that breakout point there, okay, where price breaks above that pivot. So in general terms, we're looking in, in the upper two-thirds for that opportunity when we make that higher low. Now, you do have to adjust time frame up or down consistently. You're always massaging the charts to get the picture right and the symmetry right. The symmetry helps us align and the process helps us align with the subconscious feelings or emotions that we have, okay? See, the subconscious doesn't have uh, uh, the mechanics or to move things around, okay? It, it basically has emotions that draw you into the chart, okay? why do we feel like this is a good trade setup versus another chart where it's not a good trade setup? What are those details? What do they look like? Okay. So as we start looking in the areas, we'll start looking for that leg base, leg base group of candles. Adjusting the time frame up or down is key to what we're going to be covering in here. It's all about the picture on the price chart and getting those details. In this area, we found the leg base, leg base group of candles, okay? And we've identified that. And as we start to see and wait for price to come back to you. I like uh, Russell was talking about the, uh, the, the NASDAQ trade that he took yesterday. You had to wait until after 2 p.m. Eastern time for that to come back down to that. And it surely didn't look like it was gonna come all the way back down, it looked like it potentially could have went back up. Okay, so having that trade set out there ahead of time, okay, and then if and when price comes back down to the area, that's where we take action. So we're spending a lot of time on the left-hand side of the chart to understand the characteristics, shapes, patterns, area, and then refining down for a buy territory and sell territory 
what that specific group of candles, the leg base, leg base group of candles, what it looks like on that price chart. And then we can identify those characteristics to understand why the trade was successful. Now, the important part about this is it's very consistent when we're looking left. And so many traders, even sophisticated traders, even my peers, okay, they're always looking over here on the right side of the chart, not using much of the information on the left-hand side, okay? Now, studying all of these types of patterns and putting things together okay, really enhances, it accelerates your learning curve. As Caitlin mentioned earlier, she took a, a, a trading class uh, to learn about uh, different asset classes, futures, Forex, options, uh, stocks, okay? And as you get in, some of you may have taken option classes and things like that, and you learn a lot of strategies and details. But the price patterns are what we need to, to put together to understand the time and also understand uh, where or what to expect to the right side of the chart, the visualization process, okay? All right, so let's go through some steps again. Step one, identify the structure. Now, did we make a lower high, higher high? Okay, what is that structure? Now, often when we make a lower high, where was the area located? If we make a lower high, where is the area located? Is it located closer to the pivot or closer to that breakout area? How many remember? Okun says pivot. All right, yeah, the, the answer is closer to the breakout area. If we make a higher high, then it's closer to the pivot, okay? Now, just some of those little common things that we put together, okay? Visualizing and seeing that picture on the price chart, we start looking in the right areas, okay? Which are closer to the breakout point of that pivot. And then we start drilling down, turning down the time frame to find the leg base, leg base. And as we adjust the time frame to get more detail, Okay, you can see we went, it didn't take much, but we went to a time frame that's not always common. Okay, a 16 minute. Now, really, it's not about the time frame. It's about adjusting the picture up or the time frame up or the time frame down to get the ex exact picture. So you, when you start thinking about the time frames that each brokerage or each platform has put out there, who, who gave us those time frames? Those are things that were just acceptable. And then people started adapting, well, I only trade a 60 minute chart, I only trade a 15 minute chart, okay? Look, you might find the exact picture you're looking for on a 13 or a 21 or you know, any variation of numbers. What your job is when mastering the charts is to understand that adjusting the time frame up or down gives you the the symmetry and it gives you clarity on the picture on the price chart, okay? And those things are important because they help build confidence, they help with the psychology and discipline of trader, okay? <laughs> Gallo says, yeah, come down to the tick chart. Now, I like trading the tick charts, but it's a little fast sometimes. <laughs> I was doing some uh, study on crude oil yesterday while I was, waiting for trades to come to me, I turned it down to a one minute chart. And you know, the price patterns are still the same. Okay, the leg base, leg base, still the same. The structures are still the same. Uh, I just went down to that small time frame chart so that I could accelerate my learning. And even like on the tick chart, as Gallo pointed out there from the chat, is that the tick is actually a nice way of looking at the charts because it takes the time element out of it. Okay, and just simply to understand what a tick chart is, is you take a, a, a grouping of a number, let's say 500 uh, ticks, and if it's 500 ticks, it just simply means that each candle on the price chart is a result of 500 transactions, okay? And um, as you start to look at that, uh, it takes the time out of it, especially for futures traders, you know, in the overnight session, things can go sideways a little bit. Okay, 
All right, so here we have the leg base, leg base, the elite trade, leg base, leg base. Nobody else out there is teaching this. And wait for price to come to you. As price comes back up to that area, okay, we have a successful outcome. Okay. All right, you guys ready for another quiz? All right, ready or not, it's coming here. Question number one, true or false? Structures help us identify specific locations for buy and sell opportunities. All right, you got that right. Uh, Dirk, a really good question up there coming from the chat. Uh, Dirk says, is a tick chart the best way to trade the overnight session? Uh, it is more clear. And the answer is true. Okay. But another odds enhancer that you could use, Dirk, is that when you're trading the overnight sessions is you look to use the buy territories or sell territories that were formed on higher volume during the regular trading hours when it comes to trading futures, okay? Or even the Forex. See, in the overnight or extended hours, things are a little more thinly traded, okay? So you pose a really good question, but if you're using buy territories and sell territories that were formed in the overnight session, they have very little volume, okay? And price can often get blown through those areas or overshoot it because of lack of volume, okay? And lack of interest in that area. So we, in the overnight session, as an additional odds enhancer, we focus on zones only to trade in the overnight trade session that have been created during the regular trading hours on increasing volume, okay? So great question. Um, and we cover a lot more of that in, in uh, mastering the charts as well. All right, question number two. If I cannot locate the leg base group of leg base leg base group of candles within a structure on a ten minute time frame, what can I do? There you go, James. Answer: Adjust the time frame up or down until I can locate it. If you cannot find the leg base leg base group of candles, it is not the right picture. Oh man, that's that discipline stuff, isn't it? And discipline is often you know, something we assume we have until we get cornered to actually follow the process. And then we tend to fight it a little bit until we trust it, okay? Great job, anybody. Any questions so far on what I've covered? How are we doing with questions, Kate? Everything good? Anything I should address? Yeah, if, you, if we missed any questions, just feel free to type them in the chat. Thank you. All right, so we have a few minutes here left of this. How many times range will you try before you quit? Ah, good question, James. Um, in the beginning, just stick with the time base. For example, let me pull this charge back up. For example, as we're looking for reasons why price changed direction, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a moment here and, and just, I mean, this is Autodesk, ADSK. How many would love to have that trade right here? Get into that trade and just take that move to the upside. Okay. Uh, the train in your eyes course that I did before was missing a few, well, it, it was in line with what I was um, commissioned to demonstrate and trade, okay? There were some parts of that that we felt that uh, we needed more explanation and a deeper dive into it, okay? And um, there's a lot more details uh, we have a little more flexibility with the charts that we're using uh, to really demonstrate and uh, bring that picture into light, okay? So there's a lot of things that are 
different and the method and approach, the whole picture. You know, Caitlin has found a really good way to simplify a lot of this and also make it a lot more visual for us. And many of us are those visual learners. Thanks for the question. So if I had a desired trade right here, okay, and on a 240 minute chart, okay, have a desire to get in the trade here, we have to look left, okay? And as we look left in the general area here, what we're looking for is that leg base, leg base group of candles. Now, it doesn't matter to me what time frame I have to turn it down to or turn it up to to get the right picture, okay? Now, in, on stocks, a gap is also considered a, a, a leg candle. And we'll go into that detail in here in just a few minutes. Okay, so what we could see right here on the price chart, even on this uh, 240 minute chart, is we could see that there's a leg candle coming in, a base candle, gap, and another base candle, okay? So we map that area right there, that picture, we highlight it, and we see that, hey, there is information over here on the left-hand side of the chart Whereas we could see that there were some sellers that would come in and those sellers came in and kept pushing price down. Okay. Then price broke above that area. Okay. No more sell tickets are left. So with no more sell tickets left, okay, the area below became that area where we had a large stack of buy tickets. And some of the ways that we could recognize that is by putting volume on the chart and then understanding how to use volume when we're looking at that, that area and to see if volume was increasing coming out of that, okay? And then as price come back down to that area. Now, another little odds enhancer that we'll just briefly talk about is the time of day when that happens, okay? And then also the time of day when it retouches. Wow. I mean, now for stocks, this is pretty amazing. Okay. And for option traders or anybody that has different strategies here, is that you see when the zone is created and if the zone was created on increasing volume. Okay. And then when it gets retested, we start to see that the retest is about the same time as when the zone gets created. Okay. Uh, I am not trading, well, this is a stock. So yeah, regular trading hours, okay? But then um, I'm constantly going over hundreds and hundreds of charts to get that picture the right way. Let's just take a double check. I got just a couple minutes left here. Uh, we can see that uh, the markets are not doing a whole heck of a lot on the equity indexes. Oh, Gary, uh, good question. I use a 24 hour. You can see that I'm using a continuous contract up here on the S&P for 24 hours. Now notice the time of day that these zones were created. So they were right towards the end of the session, which is often, uh, this was based after the FOMC meeting. Okay. And um, if we add volume to the price chart, we can see that there was increasing volume on that, okay? The time of day that it was created. Now, this might be important for you, okay? We just talked about the time of day. And we see that that area was created around that uh, 2 o'clock, 2.15 time frame, okay? Now, when should we expect it to come back down into our buy territory or sell territory? What do you think? Should it come back in about the same time? Oh my gosh, that means you don't have to sit in front of the chart the whole day, right? I don't know how it's gonna get here. It may go up higher first and come back down. Okay, um, We don't know how it's gonna get there. 
Okay, but using these additional odds enhancers and understanding that, you know, Caitlin and I have a lot more deeper dive information that we're going to get into. Right now, we're just talking about some of the basic chart patterns as we're looking at our day unfolding. Okay, and there. Yeah. Yes, go ahead. I see a question from Ken Free. I'm not sure if you mentioned. Um, he says, "What do you do if you find a few different leg base leg base levels?" Ah, great question. So, I was doing a little research. I think on Microsoft. I don't remember what time frame I was doing that. Let me change my date back. Well, it's because it's already done over here. Okay. So as I was looking at Microsoft, now this is on a, a 15 minute chart, okay? And as I was locating the area, okay, we saw price come dipping down into here. And then I said, okay, well, I have an interest in this area. Okay, now as price moved and took out all of those sellers, any sell tickets were left over there, we can see that we, we had a, a structure that made a higher low. So just a, a review quiz, when we make a higher low, where do we look for that leg base, leg base group of candles? Yeah, in the upper two thirds or close to that breakout point, correct? Okay. Now, what, what I also want you guys to understand and what you're experiencing in this showcase that we're doing, okay, is you're also seeing the quizzing and the learning reinforcement that we keep doing throughout the whole presentation. And repetition is kind of the mother of all learning, okay? And now, so the area that I have circled right here, let's just take this noise off here for a moment, and the desired trade. Okay, I started with a 15 minute chart and to speed this up, I'm just gonna put the little blue dots on the candles that are the base candles, which Caitlin's gonna be covering just a moment here. So as I started dropping this down, I now came into a 14 minute chart and I'm looking for that sequence of candles. There we go. So on a 12 minute chart, I had a rather large zone, okay? So if that size of that zone is acceptable for your risk, perfect, okay? But if it's too big for your risk, then you can keep going down. We still have 12 more time frames that we could drop down to, okay? To find a smaller zone within that area, okay? So we've got 11 minute, didn't change much, uh, 10 minute. On a 10 minute chart, we start to adjust it just a little smaller. We have a leg, a base, a leg, 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 and a base, okay? But it didn't make the zone much smaller, okay? And I'm gonna change the colors for the, the wider zone, okay? Now for me, being a trader for many years, I like that exact turning point, okay? So I still had to keep turning the time frame down, and as I did, we start seeing that, well, sometimes it can be adjusted and sometimes it cannot, okay? Now I'm down to a six minute chart and I'm able to adjust that just a little bit more, okay? And if, if that's within your acceptable range, fantastic. Five, four, you can see a four minute chart still not giving me the leg base, leg base, three, Two, all the way down to a one minute chart. And on the one minute chart, we see that we have the leg, base, base, leg, 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 and another base. So we were able to take a large time frame zone and reduce it down to that small time frame in order to get that desired result, okay? Remember, this is the trade we were looking for, okay? 
Now, what's important is that you see that that group of candles was present and price changed direction. Okay. That is one of those, the epiphany of it is like, oh my gosh, that's there. Now that's there each and every time when we're looking for a desired trade outcome. Okay. And it doesn't matter what time frame you're looking at. It, it's just when you find a trade and the process of this is find a trade that you have a desire to get into. Okay. Long or short. Okay. And let's just take a, a moment here. So here we have a picture and I'm gonna put this right on top. This is something that uh, we also see that uh, has helped train the eyes for people to understand where to look. And as we're, we're looking at this picture, we can see that we have a structure. And then we have price moving through that structure and breaking below that range. Now, most cases your sell territory is just gonna be right on the other side. Okay, hi Stephanie. Can you remind us what the Globex high and low are? Well, the Globex is the overnight extended hour session. What is the high and low? Okay, so on the overnight high point and the overnight low point, often traders take action. For example, if price breaks the low of the Globex low and there's a buy territory below it, this is what we call the, the Globex trap, okay? All right, coming back to the picture here. So here we have that higher high, we got our structure. And then we're looking in the right area, kind of in the upper two thirds here. And we found the leg base, leg base group of candles by turning the time frame down. And that's where we're anticipating the opportunity to take a trade short if in a downtrend. Okay, and let's go to a higher time frame trend on. And is Microsoft now in a downtrend or has it started an uptrend? What do you think? If we make a higher low and a higher high on the higher time on high time frame, are we in an uptrend? There we go, James. Thank you. So that that area that we're looking at as a sell territory is really a profit area. It's not a sell a place to take a trade short. Okay a place to take a profit. But there's so much more that we're, we're building into this. What we're doing today is doing a, a small showcase on here to help you see ooh, where we may have high probability opportunities. It looks like we're about getting close to that, that breakout area. And it, and this is also demonstrating that we have a, a nice pocket of points. If price starts moving up, we're looking at 44.38, okay? Now we're still expecting over the next couple of days a one and a half, 2% pullback. Okay. NASDAQ dipped into it. We're also consolidating there. And yeah, and it looks like the Russell is in the lead again okay, with some, a sell territory up at 2063, 2007. So what do you guys think so far? Some really good information. Now this next part that we're getting ready to go into will give you a lot more of the details of what we're talking about when we talk about a leg base, leg base group of candles and more of that picture on the price chart. So I'm gonna pass the mic back over to Ms. Caitlin and she's gonna take you a walk through that. Awesome job, Jeff. Yeah, so what we're getting into now is understanding unsuccessful trades. And as Jeff was demonstrating, we're looking for leg base, leg base group of candles. Oftentimes when we take trades that are unsuccessful, they don't have all the criteria that we're looking for. A lot of people tend to beat themselves up if you know they have trades that don't work out, which is common, but we just need to understand we don't want to make them moving forward. So how can we learn from them, understand what characteristics we may not be having 
versus a successful trade. So that's what Mastering the Charts is all about, is seeing what criteria is there to make a successful trade, and then understanding we may not have that with the unsuccessful trades. So understanding unsuccessful trades, the purpose is to visualize past mistakes that went uncorrected, that's key, and be able to learn a different way of looking at the price charts. So if you ever had a, a trade mistake that you made and then you did it again and again, that's where we have some issues where we want to address what went wrong or what meant what went uncorrected and then how we can correct that moving forward. So there are common mistakes that people make that we will address and show you how to become more methodical, rule-based and specific. That's everything Jeff and I have been showing you as far as the structures, refining structures into areas and then looking for that very specific group of candles. We will be implementing this by showing you a step-by-step -step process that focuses on training the eyes. So example one, especially if you are new and haven't seen these before, gonna be a little bit of a quiz to see if you would have taken trade setups here. So looking at this chart, we're looking at Facebook right now. Is this a place you would want to take a short trade or sell? based on, as we mentioned, it's important to look to the left-hand side of the chart. Is this enough information here to take a short trade here? How many of you guys are gonna sell here? Or are you, are you thinking it's not a good place to sell? See, no, Russell says not on that screen. Good job, guys. Awesome, and who can tell why? So why are you saying no? I think so some of this is it's, you're picking up on it, which is amazing. But we can see this is where Facebook previously had a strong move down. Russell's got it, no three touches, no leg base, leg base, exactly. Ari says structure is missing, look left. You guys are nailing it. Excellent job, guys, no touches. There you go, so trade failed. So what's missing? You guys are on top of it already. A lot of different things are missing. So key thing is we want to keep looking left. Again, a lot of people just get so focused on well, what's happening right here that we're not looking left. And that's where all the information is, is what's over here. So how many of you guys have had this happen to you before where you've been stopped out? We can see here just for price to go in your direction after. So it's like you have a good spot, you have your entry, your stop, you get stopped out, and then price ends up going in your direction anyways. So the answer, if this has happened to you, try going back to those trade setups, looking a little bit further to the left, and that's where that information might be. So to bring out some more detail on that, this could have just been the first test of our sell territory over here. Price may have gone a little bit deeper into our sell territory, and that's why price just went a little bit higher up. Once we know the difference between where we're looking to sell and what's maybe considered a pivot point, we won't be able to, or we won't make those mistakes moving forward. Yeah, definitely happens too many times. We can see here looking left, what information is there that Jeff and I have been discussing. We have the leg base, leg base group of candles present. We can see the three touches. So the three touches is gonna to get us in the area where we should be looking. So in this case, we can see the three touches on the bottom side. So we're gonna be looking in that area right above the three touches. So now we can see why price stopped here is because of what's to the left-hand side of the chart, which is also why price stopped here is because of the information over here. This wasn't the sell territory. It was a little bit further to the left. We can also see that price pattern has the structure that we're looking for where we had a high point and we made a higher high before that breakout. So all of these different odds enhancers are getting us in the right location of where we should be looking. So this is a retest, a pivot point, not a place to sell. So again, if you've ever had those trades where you, know, you had your entry, your stop, price went just past your stop, change direction, Again, look a little bit to the left and you may see a lot more information over there that's going to help explain why. All right, example number two, you guys got it for the first one. So we're looking at NASDAQ futures. Is this gonna be a good place to buy? How many of you guys would take a long trade here? Or are you guys gonna pass and say, not the best place to buy? Hmm. 
You guys are doing good. Yeah, no pass. Exactly. So we're missing a lot of the information that we've been showcasing to you guys. It's a lot of information that's not present. Yeah, Hari says it didn't show the three touches. No leg base, leg base. You guys are killing it. Great job. So even though this is where NASDAQ previously had a strong move up, we still want to keep looking left and see what information may or may not be there. The trade failed. So what's missing that versus our successful trade set setups with structures, areas like base, like base, do we have that picture here? In this case, no, we don't. So we don't have the like base, like base as Dirk mentioned. We also don't have the three touches as Hari mentioned. So I'd like you guys answering because someone may have one answer, someone may have another answer and all of these answers were just tying together. Carrie got the last one too. That was, that was, I was waiting for that one. The trend is to the downside as well. Great job, Carrie. We can see we made a high point, a low, lower high, lower low, and then another lower high. So at this point, taking a long trade here is gonna be more elevated risk. When we're in a downtrend, are we looking for more long trade opportunities or short trade opportunities? What do you guys think? Exactly, yeah, short trades. So keep that in mind, trend is gonna be key. I believe we go into a lot more detail on that on day two, talking about the trend and trading with the trend. So to stack the odds in our favor, in this case, the trend was down, we'd actually be wanting to take this short trade here versus taking a long trade down here. And this is a retest or a pivot point because it doesn't have all this information that we're looking for. So going into a deeper dive of what you're gonna get in Mastering the Charts, you know, a lot of you guys have already signed up. So we're looking forward to it. Gonna be this weekend. So if you haven't signed up yet, make sure you do so. It's gonna be the 19th through the 21st, Saturday, Sunday, Monday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern time, doing a deeper dive into everything that we've been showcasing today. So what you're gonna expect when you complete this course, you're gonna have a plan going forward on how and when to execute trades. If you're one of those people that feels like they're just jumping into trades, placing market orders, you don't know when to get out, or you don't know how long to stay in, this course is going to give you all the details on what we look for. So understanding where to look within structures, again, those W and M patterns, if we make higher highs or higher lows, going to give us that area and that range of where to look. Reversal versus trending structures. So also key in identifying types of structures to know where we're at in the markets. The importance of wick over wick, Jeff was mentioning that before as well, and identifying that that's an area we want to do a deeper dive into to see what information's there. Seeing pictures and pictures fractals. So how many of you guys know what fractals are or use fractals? As I always mention, fractals are one of my favorites because it gives you and exposes that picture on different time frames that we see. So if you're new to fractals, just understanding that we can see these pictures and price patterns on different time frames, we just need to be able to have the flexibility to turn the time frame down, turn the time frame up. Yeah, so that's part of the uh, mastering the charts as well. So if you're not familiar with fractals, very important with what Jeff and I are showcasing as far as these pictures. We may not see them on one time frame, but if we adjust the time frame up or down, we start to get more detail. So that's going to be key with visualizing these price patterns. So that ties into this one, adjusting time frame to visualize these price patterns. You may need to turn the time frame up, turn the time frame down. You now, as I showed before with the NASDAQ trades that worked out, you know, this one went down from here and changed direction on from a one minute sell territory. This one down here uh, changed direction from an eight minute buy territory or leg base, leg base group of candles. So just keeping in mind, time doesn't matter. It's all about the picture on the price charts. Having that flexibility to adjust the time frame is going to be key with taking these trade setups. So trading with the trend, as we saw before, we were in a downtrend in that unsuccessful example. So looking to be trading with the trend to stack the odds in our favor. Understanding consolidating price action is going to be key in understanding what's inside the wick over wick. Different variations of leg base, leg base, and then understanding active versus pending territories. 
So this one's key. I see a lot of people jumping into trades too soon just to get stopped out. So once we know the difference between an active versus a pending territory, that's gonna give us a little more confirmation as well. So how we'll do this, we'll showcase and use different timeframes and illustrate how that changes the picture on the price charts, understand why price changes direction. So this was key for me in learning uh, how to trade was understanding why price changed direction. You know, why did price stop going down and turn up or why did price stop going up and went down? All about looking to the left-hand side of the chart and seeing these price patterns. Understanding filled versus unfilled orders, structures, areas, leg base, leg base, everything that we're going to be doing a deeper dive into. Identifying the specific group of candles where price often changes direction. That's going to be our daily trades own leg base, leg base that we look for. And then putting the pieces together to be able to visualize high probability buy and sell opportunities. This one's key. And I know so many people, you know, just from, from teaching and coaching and trading that are very, very knowledgeable and know a ton of information about the markets and how to trade, but they still can't seem to put the pieces together and execute once that time comes to wanting to buy or wanting to sell. So if you're one of those people that, you know, you know so much, but for somehow you're just missing some of the pieces when it comes to actually making the trade, that's where we're going to be putting the pieces together for you guys. So some of what you can expect in mastering the charts, exposing the wick over wick. As we saw before, this wick over wick often gives key information of where price changes direction. So why did price stop going down here? Looking to the left-hand side, we can see that wick over wick. Now inside the wick over wick, when we turn the time frame down, we get to see more information. So more consolidation, more basing before that move up. We're going to be doing this in mastering the charts and seeing how adjusting time frames can expose more information and actually give us a lot more detail to determine whether to take a trade or not. So join to learn why price changed here. Wick over wick is going to be key in one of the main parts of what we look for within our structures. Also different types of structures and where to look. So I think some of you guys recall this from uh, potentially training the eyes where when we have reversal structures or if we make a higher high, we're gonna be looking as Jeff mentioned in the upper section closer to the pivot. But when we have these trending structures, we're gonna be looking closer to the breakout point. So seeing pictures and pictures with fractals. So if you're not familiar with fractals, this is gonna be the gist of what we do and how we can use these to our advantage. So on crude oil right here, we can see an eight minute time frame. We see this consolidation, price is basing in here before moving away. So we may not want to look into this area because we don't see enough information. If it's not the right picture, what we're gonna be doing is adjusting the time frame. You can see we went from an eight minute to the, a two minute. That gives us a lot more detail in here. When we turn the time frame down, we get more candles and we start to see more information that we've been discussing. So now we can see the three touches on the top. We can see a wick over wick right in here. And we can also see the leg base, leg base group of candles. So why price stopped here is because again of the information to the left-hand side of the chart. Just need to be flexible with timeframes and understanding that by adjusting the time frame down or up, we can get more detail to see the pictures that we want to associate with. Okay, so how many of these are going to apply to you? So understanding the key to better trades are going to be going through some of the comments that, you know, we've heard from students in the past of what they struggle with. How many of you struggle with timeframes? I think someone mentioned that before as far as maybe you look at specific timeframes or maybe you're not sure which timeframes to look at. But if you struggle with timeframes, know that in Mastering the Charts, we're going to be looking at all different time frames. It's all about the picture on the price chart. How about being impulsive, impatient, or undisciplined? If this is you, you may not be knowing exactly what to look for or have your rules in place. Mastering the charts is completely rule-based, objective, and looking for these precise pictures on the price chart so that we can remove this and become more disciplined traders moving forward about this one, getting caught up in the smaller time frames. You know, a lot of people start to get lost when we turn the time frame down. They don't know where to look. 
So we're going to be doing a specific refining process from the higher time frames to the smaller ones to get in the right areas. About this one, struggling to be confident in your zones. This is a big one too, where I feel like people don't trust their zones or believe in them. If that's true, then maybe you just, you're missing a couple pieces or you may not know exactly what to be looking for. Yeah, trusting is a big one. So again, if you don't trust your zones, why is that? And do you have that exact picture that you're looking for? And we need to be very specific in what we're looking for. If it's not the right picture, it may not be a good quality zone. This one struggle with the discipline. I mentioned this to one of our students, or he actually mentioned it to me, that this is one that's big for him. Struggling with the discipline and thinking that you need to trade every day. Any of, the, uh, do any of you feel that this applies to you? I think people feel that the more they trade, the better, which is honestly not the case. We need to be trading less, but just picking higher probability trade setups. So if you think that maybe not the case, all about the picture on the price chart and picking the best ones. Wait, I do need to trade every day, says Russell. Uh, well, I mean, it's, you can trade every day, but you don't need to. As long as the picture is right and we know what to look for, we just don't want to get into the habit of over trading. Ultimately, it's about the picture on the price chart. Going with that, if it's not the right picture or the market conditions are more volatile, we may not to be. We may not want to be trading. And then, do you get in and out of trades too soon? This is another big thing. I saw um, a student that was placing market orders at the wrong times. Like, what are you doing? Like, we shouldn't be jumping into trades. So with mastering the charts, we're giving you specific entry points, specific exit points, so that you know exactly when to get in, you know exactly when to get out. So that avoids this one. And then if you struggle with structure, shapes, and patterns, we're doing a deeper dive into this on day one, visualizing those structure, shapes, and patterns that appear time and time again in the markets. So the key to understanding better trades is training your eyes and understanding that all of this can be remediated and tweaked once you understand what to look for on the price charts. You know, and Douglas says all the above, exactly. Yeah, so if, if you're all of them, you're not alone. And you know, I think some people want to pretend that they're not any of these and they're great and perfect, but honestly, everyone struggles with some of these time from time to time. So. It's just about you know, understanding this and how can we help you to fix some of these issues. Once you know what to look for and you train your eyes to visualize the price charts more clearly, then we can start checking these off and working on these so that you become more confident moving forward. So some of what our students say about our previous seminars, just some highlights, you know, Natalie, one of our um, amazing students, she said that she uh, added about 30% to her knowledge and filled up some gaps in regard to questions I had. You know, this is going to be a big one with this Mastering the Charts seminar. You know, if you have some gaps or questions or things that you quite don't understand, you're going to be able to ask them. We're going to be taking that and incorporating that and answering any concerns that you have. So, you know, part of this course that we're adding is that, you know, we started getting a lot of emails in from students with concerns that they had you know, send us emails in and we're going to be incorporating that actually into days two and three of mastering the charts where if you have things you want us to look at, if you struggle with breakout trades or if you struggle with getting in and out too soon, let us know, send us an email in and we're going to be addressing that um, on days two and three with you guys. So again, filling in those gaps for you and in increasing your knowledge base is going to be key. So Ed said, you know, um, that we teach you habits to become a more consistent winner. Consistency is going to be key as well. So when we have the rules in place, we know what to look for and we stick to them, we're gonna have higher probability trade opportunities. John said the questions, quizzes, and interaction really help to get the information locked in. Big one here, we took John's feedback and incorporated it. This is going to be the most interactive and engaging seminar we've done to date. So if you do like the questions and the quizzes, you know, it's a great way to reinforce what you're learning. So expect a lot of these in this Mastering the Charts. I know someone before mentioned too, what was the difference between this one and Training the Eyes or the previous one? 
you know, just a lot more walkthroughs, a lot more engaging. We're going to be, you know, quizzing you guys, giving you homework at the end of the sessions, you know, a lot more things to just enhance the learning experience. So by the end of the three days, you have so much more confidence in the way you read the price charts. And then John said uh, he liked and found usable chart reading and how to look to the left that we're again going to be doing a deeper dive in day one, the importance of looking to the left hand side of the chart to find where we have all that information. Okay, so this is this weekend, you know, a lot of you have signed up already so we're looking forward to seeing you there. If you have signed up feel free to send in your emails with different topics or concern you want us to see us talk about. And we're going to be talking about those on days two and three. Um, if you haven't signed up, again, that's going to be two days from now, believe it or not. So make sure you sign up. I'll post the link in the chat so you guys have that. You know, what you're going to be getting in Mastering the Charts is you're getting three full days from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern time. A lot of content, but a lot of examples, a lot of walkthroughs and showing you and training your eyes how to visualize these price patterns. You guys will get the recordings after the fact. You'll get all of the, the walkthroughs. There's supplementary material and templates we'll send you home with um, and different handouts as well. So a lot of quizzes, a lot of Q&A, the recordings, all the handouts, that's going to be yours as well. If you can't attend live, still sign up anyways, and you'll get access to all of this. Any questions that we missed, or Jeff, anything that you want to add? Um, no, the, <clears throat> this. Um, well, yes, yeah, I'd like to add something always. You know, <laughs> uh, this is an amazing process. It's an amazing transformation to watch students go through this and have their eyes open to seeing the possibilities of working the right side of the chart. Also mapping the right side of the chart, understanding that you can take a, a breakout trade as long as it has the right qualities. And the breakout trade is an essential part of helping us train the eyes for the pullback to a buy territory or run up into a sell territory. And these are of key importance to understand how price consistently does these behaviors and the mapping helps us to navigate and visualize the right side of the chart. So it, it's an amazing course. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm always amazed at, you know, having the strength of my partner, Caitlin here, and seeing the, um, the way that she sees things versus somebody that's been in this for 30 years, okay? And she's like, you're making it too complex. Okay, let's, let's simplify it. And, uh, Let's get some more pictures out here. So uh, Caitlin's contribution to a lot of what we've done here is to simplify and help students, as she was a student, kind of working her way through this process to visualize and see the right side of the chart where we have high probability outcomes. So it's a really good blend of taking an old dog and taking a, a, a new newer student, okay, and, and putting that information together so that we can help everybody start to visualize and and we support them also we support you guys in the live trading room as well see we got a bunch of questions coming in so kevin says if we sign up and can't attend live how long will the recordings be available so you'll get access to that indefinitely through the elitetrade.com so i posted the link once you register, upon completion of the event, you'll have access to all the recordings, all the materials, all the content as well. So all the PowerPoints you're gonna get as well. You'll have access to everything through the website for as long as you want it. That's the nice part about it. And this presentation, as well as our last showcase is uh, posted out there on YouTube, if you'd like to, or will be posted out there on YouTube, if you'd like to visualize that as well. When Dirk says he's going to sign up, he misses your companion sessions and XLTs. I miss them too, but we have our live trading room, which is, uh, you know, been really, really great. Uh, we also have our Discord group that uh, we, you know, occasionally about twice, maybe three times a month, I'll jump in and we'll just do kind of an impromptu uh, trading with the, the Discord group that uh, is also part of when you sign up for the live trading room. Let's see, and Douglas says, can't make this one. Will you be doing these monthly? 
I think we'll talk about it in the future. Right now, it's just this one for right now. But if you can't make this one, again, the, it'll be still on our website. So you can get the recordings, all the content that will still be available if you can't attend it live. See, hey, Gallo. Gallo says, in this course, do you, em do you emph emphasize on putting together a good trade plan? Absolutely. That is going to be key. So with a good trade plan, you know, we're going to set you up for success at knowing what to look for and sticking with those rules is going to be key in this course. Hi, Dr. Bonnie. Um, the, um, the, we're not doing, per se, the companion sessions. Uh, Caitlin and I have such a, a big workload. Uh, we just don't simply have the time to do what uh, you're referring to as those follow-up sessions. We do a lot of our follow-up in the live trading room, and that's where we will uh, re, well, where, where we will, I'm looking for the right word, um, where we go over everything over and over and over again, okay? And we, we reiterate and we, we complement uh, in the live trading room with actual live trades. Yeah, so to join Mastering the Charts, I posted that link there. And then also, if you're not part of the live trading room, I'll put that in the, the chat as well to sign up for that. Uh, Russell says, as a current live trading room student, this is way better than the XLTs. Our live trading rooms are so fun, you know, just we're, we have the flexibility to kind of do whatever we want, look at different asset classes, what you guys want you know, the, the live trading is key. And then for the live trading room, I'm gonna be posting that one as well. Um, so it's 14.95 for the three days. And then that's going to include, again, all the recordings, you get the live sessions if you can't attend it live, but if you can't, you'll still get the, the recordings after the fact and then all the content from the three days, the, the quizzes, all the homework sessions, you get access to all that as well. And then as always, if you have any questions after this course, you know, it's not just take the course and that's it. You can still email us, ask us questions because we want to make sure that you're set up for success after the fact. So whatever we can do to help you guys in understanding this, answering your questions. So that's why once you sign up or if you have already signed up, send us your emails. What are certain things that you may still be struggling with? And we're going to be incorporating that into days two and day three. Uh, Sean says, Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, Sean says he's new to live trading rooms this week. Absolutely love them. Love having you there, Sean. Do you do individual stocks and or ETFs in the live trading room? So yeah, we do do student requests. We typically stick with futures, we'll look at some stocks, and then if there's certain products that you guys want to look at, you can always type them in the chat. We try to stay on top of that, and we'll bring up those charts as well. And you can always, uh, you know, send an email to help it, uh, sorry, support it to the elite trade.com. And, you know, if you have a picture or a chart that you would like to reference in the live trading room, we're certainly happy to, you know, use that as a student request. Yeah, so email us your chart setups. We'll review them and mastering the charts as well. And then again, any questions, any things that you want us to address that you may be unclear about, send those in as well. Let's see. Let's see, Bonnie has another question. If we join the live trading room and already took the previous training the eyes, will we need any new materials or do you have an addendum to the original course? without retaking. Um, Jeff, you want to answer that one? Uh, we have a lot of similar concepts, a lot of similar material, okay? Uh, but as Caitlin and I have been working together, we've simplified several things on this and uh, enhanced it. So there are some things that we will talk about in a live trading room that you may not be unfamiliar, but if you've gone through Training the Eyes uh, course before, you're going to be able to adapt to some of those uh, uh, concepts that we're talking about. And the pictures will be pretty much the same, almost exactly the same. Okay. 
Yeah, there's things that we've added though. So like the dead space, the three touches, is it a pivot versus a buy or sell territory? You know, we've took training the eyes, some of these price patterns you may recognize from that, but we're really bringing in a lot more detail to make the charts easier to see and for you to, to visualize those price patterns more clearly. See, any other questions that we missed? I think we got to all of them. Oh, okay, Gary's typing in his question. Take your time. Order filled. Yeah, so today's the 17th. We're starting on the 19th. So again, if you've already signed up, we're looking forward to seeing you there. If you haven't signed up yet, we're two days away. Again, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern time. You guys will get a one hour lunch break in the middle. So it's not just, you know, all day. Um, we will have a break in the middle, but just a lot of great content that we're going to be giving you guys. Yes, yeah, so you can go. So it's theelitetrade.com. So elitetrade.com, I'm not sure what that one is, but I'll type it in as well. So it's theelitetrade.com. And then let's see, Gary says on your website, you have live trading room and stock pick special bundling. What is that? So yeah, we offer daily stock picks and then we also have the live trading room. But if you bundle them together, we give um, a discount on those. So that's if you get both of them. The stock picks are gonna be Monday through Friday before the market opens, you get those. Those are gonna be more trend trading uh, stocks. And then the live trading room we do Monday through Wednesday. 9 a.m. to 10.30 uh, Eastern, from 9 a.m. to 10.30 Eastern. Also get access to the Discord group. So I know a lot of you guys that are already part of the live trading room enjoy the Discord group. So a great community to stay in touch, post your trade setups, see what other students are looking at as well. And I'll post the links one more time. So live trading room, that's gonna be this one. And then for mastering the charts, that's going to be this one. And then for everything else, you know, the we do have, as was mentioned, the live trading room and stock pick bundle, that's gonna be on the website as well. Just go to theelitetrade.com. Jeff, do you see Bonnie's comment? I love seeing TS 9.5. Oh, Trade Station. That's going to be for you then. Yeah, I still use it. <clears throat> that, uh, you know, Caitlin and I both use, um, Caitlin used Thinkorswim and I use Trade Station. And that diversity helps us also teach many more uh, students out there and help them um, see the picture on both sides. Mm -hmm. So if you have any questions at all, please email us. You can contact us through our website. So I'll actually bring up the website now um, so you guys can see it. So it's, again, theelitetrade.com. And then if you go under products, just if you are new to our website, you can click on the first one here. going to be mastering the charts to sign up there. Click on that. It's going to give you a good description of what's included, but you're going to know the most from just the showcase and us going through it, what to expect in mastering the charts. If you have any questions, you can click this contact us tab at the top. So, you know, we love to hear from you guys, put in your information and message. If you have any questions, that's going to be this tab up here. And then all our other products on the products tab. You can see that uh, someone mentioned the live trading room and stock pick bundling. We have that if you want both products. Everything else is going to be here. And then another one that you want to keep an eye on is our upcoming events tab. Just to see what's going on, stay in tune with what we have going on here. We have, again, our complimentary showcases and then signing up for mastering the charts. Let's see, any other questions? The stock pick does not have a link. So for, if you want just the stock picks, you can go to products and that's going to be this one right here. 
So you can either do the bundle, live trading room and stock picks is gonna be this one. And then if you want just the stock picks, that's gonna be this one on the right. Yeah, no bundling with the live trading room and mastering the charts. So those are separate products. Do the bundling. It should, oh, make sure that you uh, log in. So if you're not seeing a link to sign up, make sure that you create an account. So you can do that by clicking in the top, log in. If you don't have an account, make sure that you sign up so that you can have access to all of our different products. That might be it. Jeff, you wanna answer Bonnie's question too? Another good one. Um, yeah. The um... We're working on our logistics at this point, uh, and uh, we are planning to do some live classes. Uh, I think uh, we don't have a date yet, and we don't have a, a venue, uh, place to have it. But we, um, we're we taking this, uh, this course here and stretching it out over five days where we have a ton more of in-class labs. Um, for the folks that can't travel or are limited to travel, uh, then they would have the, the videos and, of course, the online content. But as things start to loosen up with uh, the COVID and, and people get a little more comfortable being around other people, uh, yes, we really want to do some live presentations and trade live with the students. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be a, a really great uh, time when we can put those things together. Right now, we're, we're really focused on what we have going on this week and uh, what we have coming up in the next few weeks to uh, put these together. So you can stay, at, we'll be sending out some promotional material and things like that once we do have that venue and, and set up. And Carrie has one more question for you, Jeff. Oh yeah, we utilize all the markets. Um, in fact, um, I'm building a lot of uh, charts and a lot of examples and the FX markets have been very, very, uh, good for those uh, examples in those pictures. So we do use the FX market, a lot of stocks, a lot of futures. Uh, and then we kind of tie in the price chart to the options strategies. But again, we're, we're not teaching an asset class specific. We're teaching mastering the charts and what that picture looks like on the price chart. All right, I think we got to all the questions. We'll look forward to, to seeing you all there. So again, that's going to be March 19th, two days away. So if you haven't signed up, make sure you do so. If you have signed up already, we're looking forward to seeing you there. And then if you have any questions, feel free to email us at theelitetrade at gmail.com. And one, one final little piece here is that, you know, the reason we do Saturday and Sunday is to keep that learning environment. And then Monday, we're gonna be using the live market as Caitlin described and uh, using uh, trade setups that we've learned. And then we're also gonna be watching and monitoring those trades throughout that, that session. One of our mottos is let the market pay for what you want. And we need to provide that live trading atmosphere, that live trading area to where we can demonstrate. And if a student chooses, they can uh, place a trade in their own account. Okay, and we're not recommending that you do that. And we actually recommend that you stay on the simulator during the, the, uh, the, the training. But you need to visualize and see that the market will pay for what you want. And if you have a desire to be part of the class, then, okay, what is it gonna take? Okay, you know, one trade, two trades, three trades, um, and so on, okay? So anyways, it'll be a great time. I mean, everybody will have a great, great time uh, and learn a lot. And, and one of course, final... the dynamics of Caitlin and myself both teaching instead of just one instructor. Oh, it's going to be so much fun. I think one last question, Gary's got it. Does your live trading room include a pre-market routine prep? Always. Yeah, absolutely. So before we even start trading, we go through our pre-market routine to understand the market conditions what's going on, what's the trend, understanding all that ahead of time is then what sets us up for the live trading. So we're gonna be incorporating that um, on Monday as well in mastering the charts. 
All right, thank you all for coming. We'll see you guys there again, March 19th. I'll post the link one more time for you guys. And again, if you haven't signed up, make sure you do so. We look forward to seeing you all there. It's going to be an amazing uh, seminar that we're gonna do for you guys, very interactive, very engaging with Jeff and I um, going through everything and training your eyes to see these price patterns. So we'll see you all there. And then I'll post the link one more time for you guys. Yeah, it'll be exciting. Everybody have a, a wonderful day. Um, do wait for that one and a half, two percent pullback that we described earlier. Uh, be patient. It should come towards the end of the day. And um, once you have that, then you can resume focusing on your longs. There you go. Thank you, everyone, for coming. And we'll see you all in two days. We'll see you guys Saturday. Have a good one, everyone. Thanks again, everybody. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye.